everybody uh, uh, to and welcome to our uh, research bite session this morning um, and uh, Dr. Jun Li Zhu is going to give us a talk this morning on the potential of spectral imaging for food related applications from macro uh, to micro. So uh, Lily or Dr. Jun Li uh, Zhu uh, is currently an SFI research fellow um, at the UCD School of Biosystems and Food Engineering um, her PhD thesis, uh, which she completed in 2018, uh, focused on the application of hyperspectral imaging on the quality control of salmon fillets, and uh, where she developed some original alg algorithms to improve imaging analysis. So uh, Dr. Zhu's uh, principal interest um, lies in the application of spectral imaging techniques uh, in combination with machine learning algorithms for different biological systems, which include food. And uh, Lily is currently leading a four-year research project, which is fully funded by Science Foundation Ireland. And this is working on the detection of micro and nanoplastics that can be released from plastic food contact materials and towards improving the understanding of the associated human health impacts. So hopefully Lily will be able to give us a really nice overview of all of this stuff. So Lily, in your own time. Cool. Thank you so much for the introduction, Paula. So today I'm going to talk about the potential of spectral imaging for food related applications. So what is spectral imaging? Spectral imaging refers to a technique that can collect the pixel spectra and the force of street dimensional data as we see from here. And there are two ways to view this data. The first one is to extract the pixel spectra and plot it. So Generally, the spectra of different materials will show different spectral features due to the chemical vibration, vibrations of the chemical bonds, as we see here. And another way we can view the three-dimensional data as a grayscale image at a different wavelengths. So depending on the applications, there are different spectral imaging modalities available. So visible near infrared line scanning hyperspectral imaging works very fast. So if for like a reasonable large area, 10 times 10 centimeter, it can just take one minute. But if you want to increase the spatial resolution, for example, to 15 micrometer, if you're using a 50 FTI point spectra, and that it, may, it might take more than like one hour to finish it. So today I'm going to present three uh, studies to showcase the, the potential of a spectral imaging. And the first study is for the fruit application. And currently I'm collaborating with a researcher from the Wageningen University. And we are working on the integration of the deep learning into the hyperspectral imaging analysis pipeline. So as we see from this uh, graphic abstract here, we first apply this deep learning and then we can localize and identify individual fruit. By using this bonding box, we can calculate the central area of this apple. And then the spectral imaging can be collected just from this central area and a pre-trained chemometric model can be applied to spectral imaging and to predict some chemical properties. So in this study, we include six different types of fruits and we image them with their original uh, package as a background, which is complex, but that's what we want. So traditionally, if we want to identify the apples from the background, Normally, we are using a NDVI value, and this is because fresh materials will achieve a high NDVI values, but the long-living objects achieve low NDVI values. But apparently, this approach sometimes is not desirable based on the scenarios. The first one is if the background achieves similar NDVI values like the fruit. As we see from here, the creatures are also showing high values as the apple. So it might make it very hard to separate apples from the crater as we see from the boundary here. And another situation is if the objects are touching each other. So as we can see from here, these two apples are touching each other. And then if after, after segmenting, we will consider these two apples as one object because they are touching each other. And that's not something we want. We want to, to identify individual fruits. Okay, so that's the reason we want to use the, uh, sorry, another one. So yeah, here I, I uh, present the NDVI based segmentation mask and we use different threshold values from T, 
equals 0 to 1 to t equals to 0 0.5. So as we see here, if we choose a low threshold values, the backgrounds are also segmented. And if we choose a higher threshold values, some apples cannot be identified. So unfortunately, there is no optical threshold values available. And that's the exact reason why we want to use deep learning to identify and to localize each fruit. And the models works very well as the average precision is quite close to one. And this is an example of showing the detection results in terms of the bonding box. So each apple has been successfully identified. And then there is a label since it is apple and the score values are very high, close to one. So this leads to our, our studies uh, final goal because we want to integrate the deep learning with kinematic models as I described before. So the idea is we use deep learning to localize each apple and then we can identify the central area of the apple and then collect the spectral imaging and apply the pre chemometric models to the spectral imaging to predict some chemical uh, properties. And this is the demonstration of how it works on these two fruits. One is apple and the other is a grape, is black grape. So as we see, all the apples are successfully identified with a bonding box and all the uh, all the grapes have also have been successfully identified. And using the bonding box, as, as we see here, the central area are identified. And based on this area, we can predict the dry matter for this apple. And we can predict also the so soluble solids contact for the grapes. And this, this proposed method from our study is, is have many advantages. For example, because we know that fruits are not flat, so it suffers from the angular reflections if we collect the spectra of the entire fruit. And the most representative one for the entire fruit is the central area. And our method can identify the central area correctly. And also this method can save a lot of time because if we want to collect the spectral imaging from the entire fruit, normally it takes long time for acquiring and also processing and even storing the spectral imaging data. And the next study is about the sodium cathode biopolymer films. So we, we, we make the films with the sodium cathode, which is extracted from the milk waste. And then we added the predecessors, glycerol or sorbitol. So the initial idea is we want to uh, develop the spectral imaging method to predict the moisture contact of the film samples. So each samples was scanned at different time points over the driving, and then the spectra were, were acquired and also the, the moisture contact were obtained. And the model works very well, as we see from this table. And in order to visualize the prediction results, we, uh, we introduced a rehydration experiment. So the water is introduced at the boundary of the cover slip. And then after, after several hours, the water will migrate into the film samples and surround it. So at each time point of the rehydration, we collect the spectra and we applied the pre the, the built model to predict the moisture content as we see from here. So the high values of the moisture content is indicated in the red color. And as we see, we can, we can clearly visualize the, the growing of the red pixels from the edge into the center. And after 24 hours, all the samples have been immersed with the high moisture content pixels. And while we are working on this project and we find something that we couldn't explain, we apply PCA for the time series spectra collected at different time points of the driving. And we found there is a red cluster appeared. And if we look at the grayscale image, which is the image we, we, we see from our naked eyes, and we see there's nothing appeared. So what could be the reason that contribute to this red cluster? To answer this question, we use a microscope uh, FTIR spectral imaging. And our assumption is that it could be the platycessor aggregates in the, in, the, in, in the cluster of the center. So to, to verify our assumption, 
we built a model to predict the platycyzer uh, concentration, and we collect the spectra from the one to seven along the diameter. And the result shows that for the points three, four, five, six, they do have the higher values of the platycyzer compared to the one to seven points. So that proves that the there is the platycyzer aggregation in the bipolar films. And by using the microscope spectral imaging, we also identified that subitters were recrystallized over the, over the storage. And this study have been uh, published in two journals. And the next study is about TVEX. So the, there are three different objectives to this study. And the first one is we want to detect and quantify the plastic substance in the tea bags. And then we want to measure the release of the microplastic particles after sieving the tea bag. And the third one is we want to compare the difference between the microwave and the hot water brewing. And this is all the tea bags brands we, we chose. We have 60 brands and we can see that the, the shapes of the tea brands are different and also the tea types are different. And to realize the three objectives, as we mentioned before, so the first step is we remove the tea from the tea bag and we uh, image them with HASBACs and ATR, FTIR. Here, I have to point out that HASBAC is a macro spectral imaging, so it is very fast. And ATR, FTIR is a micro spectral imaging, which gives us the middle infrared spectra. And it is more related to the fingerprints of the chemical compositions. And then we also use a set of Viva, which uh, provides very high resolution optical image at a sub micron scale. And the next step, we also remove the tea bags and the, the, the tea bag, the clean tea bags are subject to the boiling water for 10 minutes or microwave treatment for one or two minutes. And then the solution has been deposited in the aluminum mirror and then be scanned with ATR, FTIR and the satellite weather in order to measure the release of the microplastic particles after sleeping tea bag. And firstly, we want to, uh, we want to characterize the original tea bags. So we use the high specs to get the linear infrared spectra of the different brands of tea bag as we see from here. And apparently we can see two tea brands. One is in the red color, which is the NYX, and another one is the orange color, which is the lion's tea. And we can see these two spectra are quite distinct from the others. And also we use a PCA and we can see that the, the NYX here and also the lions, they have some distance uh, away from the other tea brands. So that means the tea, the tea brands of the NYX, they have some special uh, chemical compositions that are different from the others. So in order to know what is the chemical composition of the NYX tea, and this is how it looks like, and also we get a microscopic image at 40x. And we, we use the ATR, FTIR to get a pixel spectra of 200 uh, micrometer times 200 micrometer, and that's how the pixel spectra looks like. And surprisingly, we can see all the spectra looks quite similar. So that means there is probably just a one dominant chemical composition that made this tea back. So in order to know the, what, what is the chemical composition, we did a spectral library search and the results tell us that it could be the lalons. And it happens that we have the reference lilons in the lab. So we collect the spectra of the lilon and plot it against the next tea bag. And the result is quite matching. So our first conclusion is that next tea bag is mostly made of the lilon. And then we want to measure the release of the microplastics. So we collect the spectra of all the particles as we show from here. And after, after, the, after steeping the tea bag in the cup, and then this time, the spectra are heterogeneous. That means there are more than one composition that uh, is forming these uh, particles. And the first thing we did is just look at this pixel spectra. So we extract the pixel spectra from the P2 point 
And we can see the spectra is actually quite similar to the T residues. And then we extract the spectra from the T1, P1 point, and we see the spectra is quite matching with the lilum. So the result shows that some of the released particles are T residues, but the others are lilum microplastics. So in order to know the percentage of the lilum particles from the T residues, we did a target uh, detection. So we use the reference spectra of the lilum and the T residue to calculate the percentage. And this is the result. T0 to T5 means to proving with the hot plate from the from the zero minutes to 10 minutes. And MV means to use the microwave. And we can see that microwave increased uh, the proportion of the, of the nylon tea bags. And also we, we noticed that they are actually a very high per percentage of the tea residues from all the particles that have been released. And then we used the optical image at 40x to look at the, the shape of the particles that are released. So most of the particles are in a star-shaped flakes, and also there is a black discoloration of the particles. And then we combining this high-resolution optical image with the percentage of the of the lilum particles from the older particles, and we calculated the number of the nylon particles that are released from the nictic specs. And the number is very striking. There are 1.3 billion nylon microplastics that have been released, just uh, steeping a single Dix tea bag. And then we want to know uh, other tea brands. So we look, so I'm presenting here just a various tea. And this is a picture spectra of the 200 times 200 again. And that's how it looks like of the various tea. And then that's a microscope image. And we look at, if we look at all the pixel spectra, unlike the next tea, we can see that they are, the spectra are heterogeneous. Especially in these regions, we can see some of them have a broad band and some of them have two sharp bands and also the, in this region as well. So that means there are more than one chemical compon component that uh, is forming this tea brand, tea, tea bags. So in order to know what could be the chemical composition of the various tea bag, so we did a spectra on mixing and the target detection, and this is the representative spectra uh, extracted from the older pixel spectra and also the distribution map. And as we see, S1, if we look at the distribution map, serves as the skeleton of the tea bag, and it is the have the highest percentage, and followed by S2. And the S3 has just a few pixels. So in order to know the chemical composition, we did a spectral library search, and it turns out S1 has the higher matching score with the natural cellulars, and S2 is more likely to be the polypropylene. And we have polypropylene in the lab, so we collect a spectra, and the plot it together with S2, and the matching score is very high. So we are certain that S2 is just a polypropylene. So in order to know the percentage of the polypropylene, which is S2 here, of the four different T brands, we calculated the, the percentage as we show from here. And it looks like each T brand, they have a different percentage of polypropylene. And the barriers have the highest polypropylene followed by the twins. And the bullies is has the lowest polypropylene available. So in summary, as we, I show here, spectral imaging is very powerful and versatile. And it can be used for the fruit applications and it can be used for the bipolar characterization and also be used for the detection of the plastic substance in the tea bag and also to measure the microplastics. Thank you.